Let us now prepare our hearts for worship as we bow our heads for the prayer of invocation. Risen Christ, yours is the heartbeat of grace deep within us, the light step beside us on our journeys, the footprints in the sand revealing how you care, carry us when we grow weary. Yours is the face we glimpse when we perceive one another's holiness. Yours are the promises that life conquers death, that goodness is stronger than evil, and that we can build our lives around your shining truth. Show us where you are today in this place and in each of us. Amen. Let us praise God through our worship.
Good morning. In body or spirit, please stand for the responsive call to worship found on page three of your bulletin. I arise today through the mighty strength of the Lord of creation. Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me. Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down. Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me. Christ in the ear that hears me. Let us worship God. are tossed about in a sea of competing images and priorities are summoned before God to be drawn back to a life grounded in our faith. Let us call upon God's mercy and forgiveness through our prayer of confession. Holy God, we confess our slowness of heart. We have failed to see you in our brothers and sisters. We have failed to serve you in meeting the needs of our neighbors. We have failed to give our hearts to you. Holy God, we are selfish, scared, and often numb to the beauty of the world and the potential for grace that are around us and within us. Awaken us today to all that becomes possible because you live. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. By God's grace, we are forgiven. Those who are open to the gift of God's love are blessed with the capacity to extend love to others and to experience the depth and the riches of the life that God intends for us. When we love one another, God's love is perfected in us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. Jesus Christ, we are forgiven.
And now let us lend our voices to those who for generations have affirmed what they believe by saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. We now have the opportunity to share the peace of Christ with one another, being sensitive to the cues we might read from one another. Peace be with you. Good morning. We thought we sort of change it up on you, a little new response. So yeah, get ready for that. We're going to do that over the course of this month. And we'll be following along a certain theme that we'll have this month. So pay, pay attention to that, and you know, go home, get it onto your iTunes, and listen to it. And maybe um, you'll be even more prepared next week. We are so glad that you're with us this day, and uh, we hope that you find this to be a place of welcome here at Church of the Palms. We are grateful for all the many ways by which we are navigating together through uh, these days, these very, very strange COVID days, and we are doing our best here at Church of the Palms to sort of respond to the ever-changing environment. Uh, we'll be meeting even this week to kind of sort out if there are any changes that we need to make relative to keeping everybody as safe as possible. We get to take care of each other has been our mantra all along, and we uh, hope to provide you opportunities for that. Uh, so even today, we are uh, our Worship team is kind of staying back and we won't be greeting afterwards so as to make sure that lines aren't forming and people don't get too close to each other and so on and so forth. Um, we know that uh, we are continuing to sort of beat the drum for you to get vaccinated if you haven't had the chance to get vaccinated yet. And uh, for those of that you haven't, please wear a mask that will keep you well and safe. And we know that many of you who are vaccinated are wearing masks, which is wonderful. So we wanna make sure that we respect one another through this season, but uh, be looking at the website and also at our emails over the course of this week in case we give you any updates as to what uh, expectations we might have of each other going forward uh, through this uh, strange time. Are you ready for COVID to be over? Ah. <sighs> I am ready for COVID to be over. So thank you for that, and uh, we're grateful for everybody's um, sensitivity to one another. We are looking ahead to starting tutoring in a few weeks, and we're looking forward to uh, getting children signed up for some instruction over the course of the year. And we're also looking forward to having tutors sign up. I know Linda Evans over there is very, very anxious for you to sign up. So you can go on our website, hit the families page, scroll down, find the tutoring uh, icon, and you can uh, volunteer to be a tutor over the course of this year. And also, if you would like to register a student in your family, please do so as well. And more information on that whole ministry is on page 13 
in your bulletin. August the 8th, that's next Sunday, we'll be having a back to school blessing. So if you have children that are gonna be here, we would love to be able to do that. Uh, so be aware of that information on August the 8th next week. Choir rehearsal is set to resume on August the 25th. Genevieve is very excited about this. It has been over a year, long over a year, since the choir has been able to be together. So many of you have been asking, are we getting the choir back? Well, yes, we're hoping to get the choir back very, very soon. So uh, be, uh, this is the chance. You have been waiting your whole life to join the choir. I know you have, and now's the chance. So please make a point to uh, uh, join them on August the 25th at 6.30. Our front office is open from 9 to 12 on Sundays now. So if you have uh, business to conduct or you need to get more information, feel free to stop by the church office. Our staff will be there and uh, provide you with all that you might need. And now we're looking ahead to the end of the month, August the 29th, which will be our fall kickoff. We're very excited about this. And we are excited about getting the word out to as many people as possible. I'm gonna show you in a second a video uh, that we have posted up on our Facebook page. And you have homework. Uh, how many of you are on Facebook? Raise your hands, I mean, come on, yes. So you're on Facebook, great. So go to the, go to the Church of the Palms um, Facebook page and not you know, like with this video that's on that page or share it even more importantly with all that you know so that can be an invitation for, from you to others to join us on August the 29th. So let's take a look at the video. And now with beautiful music to guide us. This is a time where we get to reflect on our blessings and give thanks to God for all the moments in our lives. The moments that surprise us, the moments that show us God's love, the moments that shape our faith and that bring us cl closer to God. We give thanks through prayer and through our offerings with every way of, gifting, of giving listed in the back of your bulletin. With joyful hearts, let us give with gratitude to God.
let us pray. Father, we humbly give our offerings to you. Bless and use these to accomplish your will through this church. We ask that you grant wisdom to those who appropriate these funds so that they may make visible, efficient, and wise use of the offerings we are giving to you today. Direct our ministry spending towards spreading the good news and educating your children towards spiritual growth and service. And bless the works of our hands. Amen. You may be seated. Well, we're excited about our worship opportunities together in the month of August. Next week, we get to hear from our students, and they're going to share with us how God has moved in their lives as they're returning from that trip to Montreat. And then on the last Sunday of the month, Pastor Steve will launch us into the new season with our fall kickoff. For the remainder of August, we'll be looking at the last three stained glass windows from our chapel series, Windows on the Word. These three windows are all related to the theme of connecting, the vertical connection to God, which then leads to the horizontal connection to neighbor, especially the stranger. We are going to be reminded again and again of how Jesus meets us right where we are and often in ways we don't expect. This mini-series is called Groping for God. And we have a memory verse for the month of August, and you'll find it on page 8 of your bulletin. Grope for God and find him, though indeed he is not far from each of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. The chapel window for today, which is on the cover of your bulletin, depicts the scene of the last of the supper in Emmaus. Jesus is blessing the bread, and suddenly the disciples' eyes are opened and they recognize him. The symbols in the upper window are the grapes and the shock of wheat, representing, of course, the wine and the bread of the Lord's Supper. This story is only found in the Gospel of Luke, and you'll find it in the 24th chapter, beginning at the 13th verse. Hear now the word of God. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And Jesus said to them, what are you discussing with each other as you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in those days? Jesus asked him, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and fed, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them the things about himself in all of the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, Jesus walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So Jesus went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, Jesus took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. 
Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered there. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then the two disciples told what had happened on the road and how Jesus had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Let us pray. Open our hearts and minds, O Lord, to hear and see you in the scriptures that are read and proclaimed today. In your name we pray. Amen. Have you ever been so lost in thought that you didn't notice anything or anyone around you? I have experienced this when I'm driving, hopefully not in a dangerous way, but in a not paying attention to the details kind of way. Friends have told me that they have waved to me as their cars passed by, but I didn't respond. I saw the car, of course, but I'm not paying attention to the details. To be fair, when I'm driving, I am often thinking, or listening to a podcast, or catching up with one of my daughters on my hands-free phone, and I am not expecting to see a friend beside me, behind me, or in front of me. Expectations seem to play a huge role in what we experience. If you expect to see a friend, you would be looking for her. And if you expect to have a great day, you often do, even when things come at you that are unplanned or unwelcomed. Sadly, if you expect to be disappointed, That, too, often comes to pass. You've heard of the self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Expectations affect how we think, feel, and behave. The two disciples on the road to Emmaus did not expect to encounter the living Lord. In fact, they said, we had hoped that Jesus was the Messiah, the one to redeem us all. But now, now Jesus is dead and we're going home. They had lost a friend. They had lost a savior. They had lost hope. These men were deep in grief. And honestly, those who are grieving really deserve a break. In his book, Lament for a Son, Nicholas Wolterstorff wrote about the death of his 25-year-old son, Eric, from a hiking accident in the mountains of Austria. Walter Stoff laments how he had taken Eric for granted. He wrote, perhaps we all take each other too much for granted. The routines of life distract us. Our own pursuits make us oblivious. Our anxieties and sorrows unmindful. The beauties of the familiar go unremarked, not treasure each other enough. As the outpouring of letters arrived expressing their gratitude and appreciation for Eric, Wolterstorff wept, and he wondered how he could be thankful for the life of his son when the loss was so excruciating. He wrote, the pain of no more outweighs the gratitude of the once was. The pain of no more outweighs the gratitude of of the once was. The heaviness and darkness of grief is disorienting and isolating. The griever is isolated from the happy person and from the other person who is also grieving because we each grieve differently. And yet, on the road to Emmaus, we learn that Jesus meets us right where we are, which tells us we should be groping for God, even in our grief and in our disappointment. 
Did you read about the Dutch cyclist Annemiek van Vluten, who crossed the finish line with her arms raised high in victory, thinking she had won the Olympic gold medal after a grueling 85-mile bicycle race? She later found out that although Kiesenhofer was nowhere in sight, Austrian Anna Kiesenhofer had already beaten her to the finish line. A disappointed Van Vluten said, I thought I had won. I am gutted about this. We had hoped. You fill in the blank. We had hoped that the pandemic would be over by now, not resurging and putting at risk health care providers and others whom we love, not to mention the fear of being locked down again into social isolation. We had hoped that the diagnosis would not be cancer, that her memory would return. We had hoped that he would have gone to counseling and not taken his life, that she would have not been on the road the night of that accident, that the building wouldn't collapse. We had hoped, and now here we are, groping for God. A pastor speaking to women prisoners in a correctional facility said, faith in God doesn't produce cheerful optimism. It produces a gritty, defiant hope that God is still writing the story and that despite the darkness, a light still shines, and that God can redeem us, and that beauty matters, and that despite every disappointing thing we have ever done or endured, that there is no hell from which resurrection is impossible. Hope is not the starting point. Suffering is. Friends, it is a suffering God whom we worship. It is a suffering Jesus who meets us where we are and often where we least expect him. But do we notice him? Do you realize that God is in this present moment? God is always in the moment, regardless of whether it's easy or hard, joyful or painful. In his book, Dangerous Wonder, Michael Iaconelli wrote about a time when he had an opportunity to spend a week with the great Henry Nouwen, who was a priest, professor, and author of 39 books on the spiritual life. Nouwen left academia and spent the last 11 years of his life as a pastor and a caregiver in a community home for people with developmental disabilities. Mike was delighted to learn that Nowen would be presiding over the Lord's Supper for his study group. It turned out that Deb would be receiving her first communion. Deb's 25-year-old body was ravaged by cerebral palsy and was as cooperative as a limp rag doll. Unable to speak, unable to respond, she had to be held by someone at all times. Well, the big day arrived. Mike had come with the expectation that this could be a great experience in the presence of God. Deb was in a fully restrained wheelchair, her face radiant, her hair beautifully done, her dress stunning. Sixty other mentally and physically challenged members of the community were there, along with two dozen workers and Mike's study group. The room was crowded and noisy. As the Eucharist began, Mike's heart sank in disappointment. Mike wrote, the noise was chaotic and distracting. Those with Down syndrome were humming loudly, continually rocking back and forth to a rhythm that only they could hear. One girl would suddenly let loose with an ear-piercing -pier shriek every few seconds, and the service had to be stopped temporarily because one member of the community had an epileptic seizure. He wrote, I was completely distracted, disappointed at the chaos and confusion that had ruined my experience of God. 
as Father Nowen presented the body and blood of Christ to each person in that room, I was secretly pouting, secretly counting the minutes until I could leave. Mike continued, when Father Nowen stepped in front of Deb, her body stopped jerking and moving out of control. Her eyes glistened. Her mouth opened to receive the wine and the bread. And then, ever so slightly, I saw her smile. At once, the noise in the room was transformed into what I imagined the noise at the nativity would have been like. God was there. His fragrance filled the room. Deb, the girl who could do nothing, the girl who would never give a talk, the girl who would never dance, the girl who would never write a book or play the piano or sing a song, taught me about the grace of God. God is in our grief. God is in our disappointment and in our experiences of the pandemic, and most certainly in our broken lives. And I wonder, when does faith become sight? For the two men on the road to Emmaus, they saw Jesus in the breaking of the bread. As Jesus blessed, broke, and gave the bread of life, their eyes were opened. Speaking of eyes, did you know that God made flounders just like other normal fish, swimming upright with one eye on each side of their face? Then, in preparation for adult life, flounders undergo a bizarre transformation. One eye migrates to the other side of their head. It's like facial reconstructive surgery, only in slow motion without scalpels or sutures. If God can help the flounder see with these awesome binocular eyes in such a miraculous way, imagine what God can do for you and for me. And I wonder, what would it take for us to see Jesus, to trust, to truly trust that God is Emmanuel, God with us wherever whatever we are doing, wherever we are going, perhaps then we would grope for God in our grief, in our disappointment, and even in our ordinary moments. We all want to connect with Jesus. We want what Jesus offers, the peace that passes all understanding, the love and grace to pour onto us so much that it overflows to everyone we meet. Can you imagine if we all were able to recognize God in our midst? For in God, we live and move and have our being. Will you pray with me? God of the flounders, fill our hearts with anticipation and expectation to encounter you on our road to Emmaus. Guide us on the path toward our destination and renew our strength as we continue to walk and commune with you. Open our eyes so we may see the signs of your presence around us. Open our hearts so we may receive your peace and love and empower us to pass on to others the grace you have shared with us so freely. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Jesus was revealed to the two disciples in the breaking of the bread. However, that only happened because of a gracious act of hospitality. The men invited this stranger to lodge with them as it was getting dark. Jesus did not force himself upon them, nor does he force himself upon us. Jesus responded to an invitation, and now Jesus invites us to partake in the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Jesus does not force, but rather invites everyone, everyone to come to this table wherever we are in life, whatever is going on and whatever we are going through. Jesus meets us here right where he is, right where we are. And it's at this table where Jesus reveals himself to us. Hear now the words of the institution of the Lord's Supper. On the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he gave thanks for it, and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this and remember me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup. He said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this and remember me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. And friends, he will come again. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that you are the God who wishes to be known. We are grateful, O oh God, that as immense and immeasurable as you are, that you yearn still to be known by your children, that you bend low to hear the whispers of your children, that you seek for our eyes to be open to see you in your glory. And so we thank you, O Lord, that you choose to be known in the breaking of the bread, in the pouring of the cup, that we would know once again of your grace and of your mercy, that we would know once again that we are all included at your table, that we would know once again that our sins are forgiven, that we are filled with your Holy Spirit, and that we are empowered to be your children in the world. So Lord, once again, open our eyes that we may see you in the breaking of the bread. For we pray this in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We trust that you received your little baggie on the way in, and we now invite you to open that and to commune together with us all, first the bread and then the chalice, and then we invite you to put it back in the baggie and take it with you or dispense with it on the way out gifts of God for the people of God. Let us commune together.
Let us pray. Merciful God, we give thanks that you have invited us to this table. We give thanks that you have received us as members of the body of Christ and have affirmed us as the community of faith. Lead us to live as faithful and dedicated disciples in service to all the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, the world is vibrantly alive with the presence of God. This week, may we open our eyes and grope for God and find him. For in God, we live and move and have our being. And wherever you are, may the beauty of God be reflected in your eyes, the love of God reflected in your hands, the wisdom of God reflected in your words, and the knowledge of God flow through your hearts so that all might see and believe. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen.